This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it is the Awesome Cast 388. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. This is the show where we get geeky talk tech here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, as we watch everybody getting their tacos, snowing every five minutes, and the interesting, colorful people of Beachview walking up and down the, the streets. Uh, but uh, we got a full in-house. First of all, I got a surprise chilla. I forgot it was your week this week. It is my week. John Chichilla joining us. On the couch. He, on the couch. Studio A. He is uh, the. Uh, he, uh, you're, I, I, sorry, I just got distracted because I realized you were in the most Marvel shot I could have ever set you up with. Because you have the Jarvis is my co pilot <laughs> stuff going on, <laughs> Black Panther behind you, and Groot. So we have just, you completely sorted it out. I just ordered the Groot Funko Pop with the mixtape thing off of marvel because of course you have yes of course everyone have. needs to i actually ordered two one so christopher could open one and one so <laughs> i could keep it in the box there is a wonderful video one of our fans from wrestling mayhem show has of her i think it was her kids or her nieces or nephews or something uh uh, uh opening some funkos of some wwe's and just it, it's like n64 kid and uh, it's I'm just like, that's fantastic. And that's also how I imagine our friend Bobby F. J. Town every time he opens one of his hundreds and hundreds of Funko Pops. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so, uh, of course, Chilla, other than being a Funko Pop expert and uh, Tony Stark look like, he is also a, uh, a gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. Also with us is the director of sales and marketing. I know that because I just put that in the title earlier today Yay. of the scare house. Like booping the sporting mic. Sporting <laughs> the Pittsburgh zombies, which rumor is, I guess it's more than a rumor, is coming back it's this year back. to the scare house. Katie Dudas, Katie Dudders, whichever you want to call her. Uh, call me whatever you want. She's a Katie of many names. Yes. And there's a butt print in this couch for me <laughs> today. <laughs> No, you moved. You're in Scott's, yeah, you're in Scott's <laughs> butt print. Okay. We actually just did something really fun with you guys. Mm-hmm. We did a, a live Q&A for the Scare House on the Scare House Facebook page. Yes. And so. then we also Instagram lived it. And it's going to be a podcast later. We it, It's using the whole buffalo. Multiple. <laughs> I'm going to use that in a pitch meeting at you some point. To. Listen, listen, we, we do the Facebook live and then you take that and you boil it down for some, for some Instagrams Dead and your podcast and you the whole, bu- the whole digital Buffalo. And we're going to put it on the YouTubes, the YouTubes everywhere. You want a MySpace? We can do that too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type it up as a blog. I don't know what this accent is that I'm doing, but that's apparently it's, my it's new pitch, awful. pitch. I think I'm auditioning for a character at Scare House now. The social media drive. <laughs> there you go. Yes. <laughs> you put the hits, hits and the woods. Hits. Yeah. No, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I went somewhere else, I'm sure. But anyways, this is the Awesome Cast where things like that happen. You can check us out at awesomecast.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Music, YouTube and video, uh, YouTube and Facebook for the video versions of the show and live streaming here every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the Facebook page. Thank you so much. I saw Steve was in there earlier. Amanda joining us. Doug, not that Doug, uh, in the chat room as well. Thank you, guys and uh being part of the chat room in there and contributing your awesome things as well um also hey at this point because we should do this more if you are in the chat room let us know your awesome thing of the week and we'll share it on the show uh as we go through here too um also thank you to our streaming partners the 405 media.com that uh, uh show us or re- show us, yes, show us audio-wise. Show us to your ear holes. Uh, every every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Time, the 405media.com. And, of course, RiversEdgePGH.com is streaming us Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. And uh, look for, what week is this? Uh, actually, this Sunday, I believe I'm going to be on there for the awesome thing of the month. Uh, joining them live at 7 p.m. Sunday night. Uh, for River Talk Radio. And also thank you to our Patreon supporters. 
uh, over at patreon.com slash awesome cast of course the coffee club five dollar level matt weller who's going to begin uh our chat about my four days with carplay in tampa and in, in lakeland uh florida this past week on my travel and i got some more stuff for the awesome thing that's uh, uh from my travels as well and also the fan of this show one dollar level thank you to our friend uh, michael fedora of the michael fedora show and uh you, of course you guys can support us too at the patreon.com slash awesome cast and if you want to uh if you're looking for some great advertising you think uh our audience fits where you need to get your word out about your project about your company about whatever maybe your podcast uh you can hit us up uh for awesome cast advertising we thank you to our supporters here at the beginning of the show and we uh, uh talk about here throughout the show advertise with us uh, hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com for more information and of course several levers over the patreon dot com slash awesome cast where you can support the show as well with perks like business cards and executive producer credits and state of the show uh reports and becoming just a, a better part of a bigger part of the awesome so so let's get into our awesome things of the week katie what is your awesome thing over here dogs 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 with cameras <laughs> <laughs> obviously why dogs with cameras because apparently humans can't go all the places the dogs dogs can go so in or or want to go sometimes yeah no kidding so doggies they are um a trio of very good dogs <laughs> um it's the snowy streets of uh, date city japan i'm sure i butchered that uh they strapped 360 cameras to the backs of three akita dogs so the they're it's a very I guess it's very cold and very mountainous so people really can't go up there. So, so then the doggies to run around yeah. and they're taking all kinds of videos. So you can see the doggies point of view. Um, the names are Ako, Asuka and Huku. I uh, believe that's Oscar. Oscar. Oh man. If I've can't. learned anything from pro wrestling. That's I true. Believe that's Asuka. I thought it was. And then I was oh, like, maybe I'm just that. pretending it is. And they just have thetas on their back. That's awesome. Yeah, they're just running around. But yeah, the doggies are doing all kinds of, <laughs> they're puffy d- teddy ears in the frame. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But yeah, so you can check that out. Um, I don't think they've really like put this out, put this out yet, but uh, it's something they're working on. It's more that this is something going on. Uh, that's awesome. That's over at TechCrunch. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm always, I'm always iffy. So, are they taking pictures or are they doing video? I don't know. I was watching. It, it might be just a time lapse, and they're grabbing some. Oh wait, no, no, no. Wait, here's here's something in the video. Yeah, no, they're, they're taking oh, still. So there's a little bit of the 360 if you guys they're are joining us around. there. So they, they are taking, because I will say, um, oh, there, there's the video too. Because yeah. this is fine if you're in a browser, but if you're wearing a VR headset and there's like moving video. You look at the dog just jumping around it, the snow. <laughs> <laughs> or just, the, you know, dogs being awesome jumping around in the snow. Uh, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> it's super cute. All right. Uh, but no, go check that video over on uh, TechCrunch uh, as well. So chill out. What is your awesome thing of the week? So Amazon, in my mind, got two big updates this week, and Google has answered back to to some of those. But the first one is Alexa has added calling and messaging to all tablet devices. So if you have an iPad or even a phone, whatever, Android, uh, probably not Windows phones, but um, if you have any of the mainstream iOS Android devices and you have the Alexa app, you can go into the Alexa app, hit Hit the speech balloon. Sorry, A <laughs> train. A train's talking yeah. to you in the background. Um, you can hit. You can open up the app, and you can actually. Before you could drop in on your dot at home. Um, now you can actually message anyone with another Alexa device, or call them from your Alexa. Device. I keep saying, that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is she listening? Um, is she, is, is she's she, right over is there. She talking back. She's talking back to me. Um, like we're we're all like <laughs> like talking about that person that doesn't want to, we don't want them to hear what we're saying about them in the room. But, but you can leverage the, the calling and messaging features like are on the show. Mm-hmm. So you can do a video conference. You can do all the and interact with all of their devices and vice versa. So you could if you're on your device at home, like your show. Um, you can hit up someone that's actually just on a mobile device. I thought it was a pretty cool concept. What I'm interested in and I'm hoping happens because <clears throat> I've seen some screen captures or, and, and they didn't look like conceptual drawings or conceptual pictures. I'm waiting for them to bring the show 
and the show interface to the app where I can actually get like the weather up there. I can tap mm. the button that makes This is that... like the CarPlay thing we were talking yeah. about earlier. Like, can we get the interface from your other device onto this device that I'm actually using now yeah. so I can get used to that device and maybe I'll buy your other device eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that they did, and it does require um, that you go into the A-Train app and, and set an option for follow if they call it follow-up mode to me follow-up mode pretty much means alexa finally understands the word and um google <laughs> she's not sure she's not sure about that because no, you haven't no, turned no. on the the uh the at some point i need to do like some other shows do that we actually mic alexa <laughs> damn it <laughs> it's okay just go back to sleep um but you do have to go into their app and you have to turn on follow-up mode. What this allows you to do is you can use your keyword mm-hmm. um, to activate her. Um, <laughs> Capital H, her. <laughs> um, and you you can actually chain together commands. So often I come home and say, hey, insert wake word here. Hey, lady. Yeah, hey, lady, turn on the TV. Was it a lady? Is that is that what, what some are using? Yeah. We were using A-Train for a while. A-Train, yeah. Hey, A-Train, turn on the TV, and then you wait for her to say, okay. And then you say thank you, because you should always thank your your personal assistant. And then you would say, hey, A-Train, turn as on we, the light. As you apparently, you're very you're, you're, you're very uh, conscious of that after a recent episode of X-Files, yes. I guess. <laughs> so, but you had, to, you had to, like, give a command, wait five seconds give another command wait mm-hmm. five seconds now they've they've inserted routines where you can go into the app and insert routines where you can kind of create your own hey a train i'm home and mm-hmm. it would do a bunch of things but to me this is they, they finally added the the capability to string together commands so so here's 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 a little bit so my problem with like alexa has all these capabilities she has she has all these capabilities. I get the email every week. It's like, here, have you tried this? But I can never commit anything to thoughts to think in the right way to ask her certain things to apply this. So what is a realistic thing? Like, you know, I'm not somebody who's going to go in and tie this thing to my home, lighting, setup, et cetera. What is something I could do with this today as a casual user, perhaps? What's the weather going to be? And what's my news briefing? So you can say both those things. It will then give you the weather and a news. Okay, so that is the string together kind yeah, of situation. So, so yeah, if you don't have a bunch of the the equipment to tie together, like a, turning a light on and turning the TV on and doing something, this would be. Um, and I haven't. I haven't. Tr- I just read about this today, so I haven't gotten to fully try it. But um, I would hope you could do something like give me my news briefing and then play bruno mars you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so where you could you could tie together commands they don't necessarily have to run in tandem they're probably going to execute sequentially let's not give them too much credit that they went above and beyond just this follow-up mode um but this will this will let you tie together those things google brought this in right before christmas now Google can only handle two consecutive commands. All right, so so I just enabled it on the dot here in the studio. So should we do a live demo? No, no, we'll do it after. We'll play with this afterwards. So it and it's actually so you do have to turn this on, right? Yes. So you do have to go into like the app or the um, mm-hmm, dot Amazon dot com, uh, and and go into the general settings and there's like a toggle under general settings for your device. It says follow up mode. So, so here's a good one. And you do have to wait for her to say okay. Mm-hmm. So, tell her to play something, mm-hmm. and then tell her to turn the volume up to eight. Interesting. So you so hey, play you some Nirvana. You'll hear her say okay and start working on that. And then you say and turn the volume up to eight. Right. Like no new way. You don't have to say her name again. You don't have to say the way. So that's word the again. whole thing. So so it's another step. You still have to time things. It you have, sounds just like. have to wait. You have to wait for her to say okay. Yeah. So, so she's gonna say okay after every command, but you don't have to keep saying the wake word. So it could be. So the example they gave is turn on the lights, turn the volume to eight, set the temperature to sixty-eight. Okay. And it, the thing I like about this is it allows you to do more than two. So Google's you're stuck at two. It's not bad. 
That's not bad. All right. So play. Here's a uh, play with your a lady. Uh, with these uh, new commands and see what you can do. Um, we're still as good. long as she does the not laughing at you, which yeah. I'm sure you've oh, read about geez. that. Oh, jeez, we we haven't talked about that on here, have we? I don't think yeah, it's so. been it's been since the last show. Yeah. yeah. So apparently, um, we're, we're going on, you know we're going off script a little bit, but uh, apparently, Alexa has been laughing randomly, and it sounds like it's part of a a Easter egg feature that kind of went awry. I think it was like you know, can you laugh or something, and and she has a laugh embedded, and it's just been going off and freaking people the f out. Mm-hmm. Has it laughed at you? So you've been here this week when this has been going on in the wild. Has 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 who been laughing at you, producer Missy? No, you haven't been getting that at all. Is it still in the location where you have it? It hasn't been thrown through the window or in the trash. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm asking. <laughs> that's because it would be because like, you've been here alone in the studio. For but how much lot. noise? Yeah. How much noise are you making? Are you watching TV and doing a bunch of stuff? Or no? Yeah, because I think that's what it is. It's getting false triggers on the laugh command. Oh, really? So if you're in a quiet room and there's no so we, so maybe like everybody's and... everybody's been watching something and a mass of people watch the same show that had this configuration of words or it's a commercial that keeps popping up and then it starts laughing. Yes. Interesting. Wouldn't it be interesting if 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 they 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 tune it up like say Big Bang Theory, right? It seems like the right audience that your echo has an additional laugh track that syncs with the show. That would be kind of funny and freaky at the same time. When they, th- it's always better when you have somebody else to laugh with. <laughs> I'm trying to think what app on. There was an app on my Nexus. Shazam used it. to do something like that. Shazam would do something, but there was an app on my my Nexus device. That I could tap a button. It was on the Google Today right, type thing right. where I could say, what am I watching right now? And you'd hit a button and it would grab a sound bite and figure out like what channel you were watching, yeah, what right, TV right, right. show you were watching. So and she's always listening. I'm sure she could. <laughs> That's not creepy. Um, all right. Let's try to get less creepy for a moment. So I had some fun. So this device, Brian Crawford introduced this to, and, and, and opened up the world to us. Mm-hmm. Our friend Wheels hooked it up, and then I, I got him a microphone. And he gave me this as a trade. I didn't even offer. I didn't even want anything in return. And he gave this. Uh, it's the uh, mirror device. It's the mirror uh, Pico projector, the MP30 model. I just noticed on the bottom of it. Um, so this thing is again like you know as thick as and smaller than my uh, iPhone 6s, right? And it's a nice projector. It's not the brightest thing in the world. So you know if you don't you know you're you know a fully dark thing depending on your situation great for presentations and things like that also great if you happen to be stuck in a hotel room for four nights and some wrestling pay-per-views or you got some jessica jones to catch up on (laughs) and you just want the biggest screen possible in your hotel room um if you're seeing the image you see this little um um black space uh this 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 narrow black area to the right that would be my television (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that I had that I rotated out of the way. Oh nope, that's my that is my screensaver. Um so yeah, so I had a nice, I don't know, 50 inch, 60 inch screen on my wall. Uh and of course it's hooked up to my laptop and I just dual screen it. So I'm I'm using my laptop MacBook speakers, which are just fine to fill a hotel room, right? Uh and this is how I watched the WWE pay-per-view this past weekend. Also probably how I'll watch WrestleMania because I happen to be traveling that weekend too. And I needed to catch up and binge on the Jessica Jones so my wife didn't get ahead of me. And uh, which I would say that is the hardest thing because it is dark. Like it's a dark show and watching a dark show on a projector is maybe not the best of my ideas. But something like a pay-per-view where, where it's like a wrestling show where it's bright. A lot of bright colors. It's not you don't feel like you're squinting to see things. Um, it works pretty cool. We've actually watched the show here in the studio. One, uh, again, a wrestling pay-per-view just to try it out one time. Threw it on the wall over by the entrance here. And uh, it worked pretty okay. You know, um, I mean, it, it doesn't. It's 1080. Sometimes the quality is not like, you know, it would look better on the screen. But it's a it's a projector, right? You don't have a full-size projector. It's not pushing the, the light, you know, as strongly as, as full-size ones would. But for a thing that I throw in my bag and now I can watch on a giant screen, um, something like a, a, a pay-per-view or a sporting event or, or something like that, it seems like the right or a bright show or cartoon. You know, it seems like the right kind of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I definitely recommend it. And again, I think these things go for about $100. Not bad. 
not bad for something like that. I haven't ever actually used it for the like like um, presentation uh, idea, and, but I'm I'm looking for the opportunity to do that too because I think that would be fun to, fun to kind of be like, oh, I have a projector right here. Here we go. So, uh, and so this is now going to be a part of my regular travel packing. Um, I threw a Chromecast in there, but you know, throwing a Chromecast on on hotel Wi-Fi is usually problematic. So, mm -hmm. um, but if you have a laptop, I mean, you're good to go. So, or you get the iPhone dongle. <sighs> no, no dongles. No, I kind of feel like I have too many dongles already. Like as as it is, I was like, I didn't bring my Ethernet dongle to because they had the line in the room and and everything. So, but definitely recommend it against the Mirror uh, M I R O I R uh projector the mp30 model and uh and there's a few of these pico projectors out there these days too that are pretty good but um yeah this has been making the rounds around our so dlp texas instrument sorry just noticed the logo and it was, wasn't sure if that was important but uh no there's a dlp chip inside like the tvs yeah well, yeah did you remember that was texas instrument light yeah that's what it is. yeah and they're they're the ones that do uh the samsung it's the Texas uh, Instrument that may, created that little chip that's probably inside there, too, okay. that they used in Samsung that TVs. Makes, I think DLP is also their technology when, with the digital projectors for the theater. Like, you see the little digital, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. made with like when they upgraded all the car mics. Your calculator made that. <laughs> My, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it plays Tetris. So, yeah. Doom. <laughs> and if you write, do the right thing, turn it upside down, it says boobs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways... <laughs> And head palm for the producer. Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> that's something that will make her feel a little better. And that's Slice on Broadway. <laughs> Our good friends at Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza right here in the OG in Beachview, as well as PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Carnegie PA, and over on the East End, East Liberty area, depending on what era you're from, uh, is their newest location. Some great stuff and uh, some good quality pizza and other things I mean, we're talking about look bacon <laughs> i think this is their instagram post uh, <laughs> and uh, um yeah, and we were talking about they have some fun videos and everything yeah see the bacon see that bacon there's some salad but there's mostly bacon uh so <laughs> thanks to our friends over there they have a lot of fun with food and we like uh chat with them when we uh go in for our pizza here and we, we we also order them other than when they support us here on tuesday nights feeding our fine guests hanging out here on the couch or co-hosts i'm sorry and the other guests that come in as well hi guys hi. Uh, <laughs> uh but we also order for a lot of our pay-per-view parties and they support a lot of what we do here in the beachview area so thanks a lot slice on broadway.com let them know the awesome cast sent you so from that, because I did not prepare what the next thing I was talking about was supposed to be, because I did not scroll up. Uh, so the Riz, of course, with Riz Plays Games, and I believe we're scheduled to have another Riz, Riz Plays Games uh, at Sorgatron Media Studios this Friday night, if you guys want to join over on his uh, Twitch channel. Uh, so he, he says, he, he sends us a post uh, that says, your favorite esports team just got a day named after them. The city of Pittsburgh proclaimed March 13th as Pittsburgh Knights Esports Day. I think Knights GG, as a good game, is their Twitter account. Uh, so, yeah, I've been hearing rumblings about this for a while. But, yeah, we're getting a esports um, esports league here in the city. Knights of Steel. The city proclaims. Yeah, and there's a big proclamation and everything as well. Uh, so, <laughs> looks like we're setting them up to be... Man, no, no high expectations here. We're just gonna put you in line with our champion <laughs> over the years, Pirates, Steelers, and Penguins. You know, just you know, just be the gaming. Ver Who's our big gaming version of Sidney Crosby? Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's that's cool. So the city, of course, uh, getting behind uh, this. I don't know where are they playing. Are they playing up at the arena? Uh, Katie, have you heard anything about this? Mm -mm. No, I so heard. not yet. I mean, doesn't. But it might be a little too early to, mm -hmm. be, to be on any sort of schedule or anything like that. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. But uh, knights.gg is the website you can follow there to see uh, what's going on there. Oh, you can get your swag. There's a sweet Knights t-shirt. That's actually kind of a cool logo, too, uh, they have going on there. Kind of a, I don't know. What is that? Is it a lion? It's kind of like a lion. I guess or lion a hawk. -ish, a lion hawkish. Maybe a little bit of both. Uh, nice enter. Player unknown's 
Battlegrounds. So, yeah, and I don't know if this is a thing where there's a lot of home team playing as well. Because I'm not, I don't know, I'm not terribly up on the esports. Just a few documentaries here and there. <laughs> Yins want to play games in that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, there is legitimately an arcade called Games in That here in Pittsburgh. So, uh, I don't know if they're going to, that's going to be too amazing for their, their branding uh or anything uh they are playing if you're curious they are playing oh look at all the movement on this website uh battlegrounds uh super smash brothers hearthstone and i don't know what the stream team is here man i you know somebody made fun of me when we were doing a live stream and i said we are the stream team of work hard pittsburgh and now here they are working on the stream team uh but Go check out again nights.gg uh, for more information. It's now. interesting the the article Pittsburgh Esports is poised to create an impact for the city of Pittsburgh through tourism, economic impact and awareness in the technology uh, workforce and is so, creating a strong relationship with the city. So. so there has to be a bit of a play then for mm-hmm. for you know some place to go and watch these games. I just haven't seen anything on here uh, any, any word on on exactly where that's going to be how that's going to be like where am i going to go and get a beer and watch a you know stream i mean obviously online and that that sort of things uh but uh, i don't know but again this is still kind of kind of early for these guys too so they uh, have internships they do there you go hey riz go sign up for an internship uh (laughs) for uh for this and if you i think if anybody should it should be you right so go check it out um also let's see what we got here brandon also dropped a line that uh 25 mlb games this season will will only stream through facebook let me see this but did, did facebook no amazon picked up what thursday night football or something like that um and this is according to the article over at kctv5 i think this is yeah his uh local kansas city affiliate uh so kind of again that broadening of that and i wonder if these would also be included in their like mlb tv packages as well uh the games will be produced by mlb network of course for uh, facebook watch and, and we've seen a lot of the facebook watch stuff i i don't know if we talked much on here but wwe has been big into the facebook watch with their their mix match challenge where they're doing mixed gender uh tag team matches and it's a uh, basically a tournament for charity and uh that they do like every thursday night after after they take smackdown uh and and i've seen like gary v has some stuff on there uh, uh um, the uh the daily show has a between the the scenes kind of thing that i think they were doing before facebook watch there was a new mike rowe show about giving back that i started watching a little bit ago that was kind of interesting have you guys kind of gotten on the bandwagon uh, is there any you know facebook watch stuff you guys have been kind of digging or got your attention is it on have you pressed that button on your app on your phone at all i have no. i have not have you no just i've seen the wrestling yeah and that's just because i watch wrestling <laughs> wasn't like i was like oh let me see what i can find it doesn't seem like you get into it until you get into a um you know something you, you, you until you get to something that, that fits your interest right so i don't know but uh it, but but somebody has to be at this point it, 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 it's that phase where facebook appears to be putting money into it the way youtube did when they were really pushing for original content like geeks and sundry and and all these like shaquille o'neal had a station on youtube for for a while and it was just they gave them money to make content to try to get over i think sesame street did some stuff when they were trying to do subscri- like paid subscriptions and things like that um but uh yeah it, it, it should be interesting chili were you gonna say something i feel like it's they got to get some content on there that they're that's exclusive to them that's going to make me make it a destination like it's yeah cuz it always seems like additional content yeah. right or or there's there's nothing like there's instagram stories snapchat like all those things have their like i i see all the people that i follow doing their stuff on other content providers when it comes to that i, I don't watch isn't a destination for me no. as of yet but it's right beside all the stuff that you're already doing on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I think that's the thing. And, and that's why I really push for Facebook Live because it's like, hey, your audience is probably there anyways. I mean, there's, there's cases where that's mm-hmm. not the case. But it's like your audience is already living on Facebook. So let's put the video right in front of them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, how many properties are people doing that 
are trying to drive people to YouTube. But now YouTube, nobody's making, not nobody, but you're not, it's not a destination to make money for a lot of people, pro wrestling, for instance. Mm-hmm. So let's push the content over here and get eyeballs on Facebook. Um, Katie, you, you, of course, you're, you, you're director of sales and marketing for a, a, a brand that operates in both of those worlds. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you seeing between that? I mean, you're, you're doing supplemental content for Scarehouse, I'd say. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I mean, I don't know if there's anything for you to get into watch necessarily, but you're still like playing in that. Like, we're still watching Jason even doing this show. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard because there's been a couple things that Facebook's doing that we just haven't quite found the niche for between like that and groups. Like, I don't know if you've seen that with pages, you can have a group where you're, and, and it's like, and trying to figure out how you fit into both of those spaces. Cause it's like, well, maybe it's kind of an exclusive thing. Oh, you for mean thing. like the groups like we do for mayhem show and, and this, and they um, you kind of attach them. I think so. It might be. I haven't, I, like I said, because I they've always been this. separate things, but now you can say, Oh no, this group belongs to this page. That must and, be and, what and it is. It okay. So I was like, together. this sounds kind of familiar, but I'm not, but it's but also, but they're also openly saying, Hey, I'm a scare house page. Don't you want a group to talk to your fans with? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, okay. Could be helpful and also messy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if anyone has any tips out there on how to, cause it's just like, it's, it's, it's kind of hard cause you hit limits and like, what kind of, stuff do we put out there you know beyond what we're already putting out there because i feel mm-hmm. like like you said we create a lot of content in a lot of different places but it's like what do else what else do people want and it's like i don't know who's doing that really well you know what i mean like what industry is really like pushing the envelope on social media in regards to like different videos especially you know for certain groups of fans or you know mm-hmm. so if anyone has any of those tips i'll gladly take them well you need a a scare house reality show that you can promote to facebook watch because you need something that's like to it's a you need i don't know if you need a scare house but yeah. you need as a, a a play on facebook watch something that is one persistent high well produced right and and you know that that, that kind of you're up there next to you know even more so the daily show offerings and whatever this Mike Rowe offering is, right? Yeah. That's that's a, it's a reality show, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but it seems like anti-reality show for it's a super positive, which is cool, you know? Yeah. It's like the good news, you know, reality show. Uh, so it, it, it's interesting to see that. And, and I think, I don't know what the numbers, I, I don't know what the numbers are looking at next to YouTube, but they're going to surpass one way or another eventually. It's, it's, it's just basically, what is that interface going to look like? So... All right. Hey, uh, we had a actual comment from Steve. The uh, logo for Knights looks like the uh, old uh, Thundercats logo. It kind, of, yeah, yeah, it looks like a New Age Thundercats logo a little bit. So, anyways, but hey, it's Pittsburgh Zones. We also have the River House. I've never been to a River House game, but that stadium looks cool. I've been to the stadium. You were at the Passion I've been Games. To the stadium. I've not been to a Passion game. You, you were at the Passion. Didn't you used to go to Pittsburgh Passion? No, no you're thinking of Power. 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 Is that well, the that was the arena ah. football? Arena football. The oh, passion's okay. the, the passion's the lady. The passion's lady football. The, yeah. Okay. So, um, oh, good. Sorry, I was getting a message for a whole other matter entirely here. Yay! Problem with working in Facebook is then everybody messages you in Facebook for other things while you're doing the thing you're supposed to be doing. Anyways, um, hey, so. Why is that green? That's our new podcast. Why is that? Why green? is that green? Uh, <laughs> all right, we already we already talked about Alexa, of course. Oh, man, we have so many uh, contributed stories this week. Uh, let me let me pick through the rest of these. Um, ooh, this is cool. Amanda, uh, our good friends, our, our, our good friend from uh, Bold Pittsburgh, BoldPGH dot com. Check them out. A, there's a new 360 camera uh, with a disappearing selfie stick. I think my Theta stopped working this week, so I might be <gasps> in a <laughs> what? Yeah, it just won't turn on, and I don't know why. <laughs> I wanted to do some stuff uh, on, on location. I was just like, oh, it doesn't turn on anymore. That's interesting. Uh, but this is the Insta 361. It looks like they have, and we've seen a couple of versions of this chilla uh, on screen for you over there if you want to check that out visually. Um it's got the the kind of stick flip up kind of theta looking one, and then it's got one that kind of goes on the top of the phone. But apparently, as part of it, um, I, I guess it kind of crops out. Am I in a 360? I don't think I'm in a proper 360 here. No, this is a promo video. Uh, but I guess yeah, it 
and you see a little bit, you see the hand holding out. So now this is going to get awkward because you see the person holding out the stick. But it apparently crops out the selfie stick <laughs> automatically. Now that's a feature because that's something you would go and post. Uh, uh, Katie, Whoa. Yeah, so so now it just looks like a floating camera around you. Wait, it looks like it attaches it attaches to the spinner thing, so you can spin the camera around you. Where are we attaching these to those dogs from earlier? But it's funny because it's like where there was the picture of the guy on the boat, or like like why do these people all have their arms up in there? Yeah, constantly? yeah, like the guy with his arm like over the car. So you gotta like so like there's a certain science to like. You're putting your arm over the back of the seat and looking natural and relaxed <laughs> while you're really just positioning the selfie stick, right, yeah. to do your 360 video. But even like the um the the skater guy they showed towards the end, like his hands are at his side, like he's balancing and he's just holding out, he just you know holding out to the side. That is cool. So it's like the drone follow camera without the drone. And this is going on the wish list. Uh, it's uh, insta insta 360.com if you want to. Check out the product page. It is going for two hundred and ninety nine dollars, which is the same price as yeah. the Theta that I may have to replace. So, um, uh, not 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 as much as the uh, um, the higher end four K Theta, but uh, the Rico Thetas I'm talking about, and those I think I have the Model S and the Model V is the new one. This is really cool. Well, here's the nice thing: is the Theta. We are Theta. Mm. We have the worst time with it, the app. And especially, oh, yeah. and it's like, oh, and yeah. this is just attaching to my phone, which makes me happy. But so the it attaches to your phone, or you can use it standalone. Yeah, right, right. So there's which two separate cool. ones. No, 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 well, no, no. It's the same thing. It's the same one. And it can go either way. It can yeah. go either, and then you can get. So they have three different models. One's Lightning. One's mm. Android USB Type C, and one's Android Micro USB. Mm-hmm. So you can use it in standalone mode. Or you can dock it to the phone. And Amanda was actually, this is what I was pointing to you to look at. Uh, she indicates the same camera comes with selfie stick, tripod, and then can attach to a phone. It does look weird. Uh, it is where it's attached to the camera sight line. So, yeah, Interesting. She- Interesting. Okay. So, so okay. So it's kind of a sleeve thing going on there. Um it looks like he's uh, doing a very inappropriate salute. <laughs> like... <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> and and just because you know again comparison points to the theta um it is doing 4k video mm-hmm. and 24 megapixel photos i don't know what the photos on the theta were necessarily yeah. but uh and it does the time lapse it does 360 photos and videos uh it has some stabilization on it um has this free capture mode that bullet time katie are you ready to bullet time some zombies yes let's do it <laughs> i'm totally in <laughs> I have zombies. That is great. Uh, n- that is definitely on the wish list. Uh, Insta360.com if you want to check that out. So, Oh, I see. You're marking the things we talk about with Green. I get it. We've upgraded our, our production this week. Um, <laughs> just no one told you about it. I just, they were just like, what? I thought that might I have to read an ad. but uh, <laughs> And facepalm again. You guys see the Google Mario Maps thing? Beautiful. So, what, have you guys played with it? I have not, and I was wondering why they didn't time this with the Mario Kart. It seems for, so random, doesn't it? For for Android and iOS, yeah. Is March it a 10th. connection? Mario Day, March tenth. It, it is for March tenth, Mario Day. If you go in uh, to your app, and thank you, Amanda, for uh, sharing with us uh, this in the group as well. Uh, so, Google Maps has a Mario time feature, and what it is is when you, when you pull it up, like your destination on there, there's a little question mark block uh, in the lower corner, and your guy will, your little arrow person will turn into Mario in the go kart from Mario Kart. It's pretty cool. Um, I mean, it's really just like you hear a let's go, and he he's he's it's it's. I don't think it does much else than your Mario while you're navigating, um, but it's a uh, it's a nice little addition. Uh, I mean, these are the same guys that just kind of randomly do like let's look for Pokemon on Google Maps and let's do Pac Man in Google Maps. So um, this seems to go right in line with all the rest of the stuff and a fun little feature. And again, I kind of wish it meant something more like oh hey here's like I said here's Mario Kart on on on. And we're supposed to have Mario Kart on our on mobile devices by the end of the year, I think. The end of the year. 
Oh. I'm like I said, I'm surprised they didn't try to work this out in tandem. But anyways, that's kind of cool. And I just have to share this. Brian Crawford, our friend from River's Edge. He, I'm sorry. He, he, if this doesn't say awesome thing in the week, I don't know what does. I'll give it a test run when it comes it comes to my door and post it here. He was messaging me this thing. Um, and he sent me, he sent me on Amazon a trash can. My sister has that trash can. <laughs> it's a special. It's an automatic touchless motion sensor oval trash can. Set of two, by the way, in two different. Uh, uh, <laughs> my, my my sister just has the one. She has the look larger that. one. Man, um, look at them. They are moving up over there at River's Edge Studios over there in Belleville, aren't they? But I guess it's one of those things if you if you're nervous about touching the garbage can or you can just wave your hand over it. And the same thing goes for closing. One it. less so, thing to worry about, right? Less less spreading of germs. Yeah, exactly. For a better, more, you know, uh, better kept uh, uh, workspace, I guess. So that's good. No more basketball shots, though. Not allowed to do that. Um, and also, uh, finally, before I move on, uh, Laura sent me. Oh, I can't show it because PC Gamer is really weird with ads right now. Um, you've, you've viewed it too many times no, today. No, like it's like an ad blocker or watch a video <laughs> ad. This is the interesting yes. thing I haven't seen for a while. Uh, not great for podcasting. Ooh, Poyo Poyo Tetris is now on Steam. Oh, that's good to know. I played that last season. All right. There's yeah. a Facebook video that you can click to. No, it didn't work. Oh. That's what I was trying to go first. Maybe I'll, nope. Because that's what she actually did, and then not I found it. available the right now. Beat Saber is a VR yes! rhythm game that's basically want. lightsaber hero. You're down with this? Want. Have you seen this? Yes, want. Look at this want. thing. It want. is. Want. That's kind of cool. So yeah, you're you're just you have to whack at one side or the other of the of these uh colored blocks coming at you. <laughs> and it makes music. And it makes music? Yeah, it's like it's like Oh. I dig it. So what So what are you swinging? Is there a camera that's doing like motion detection? No, this like is, this is, this is like... for the HTC Vibe. Oh, so you okay. have hand things. There's This is not for your gear, no. you know, that, that you don't have necessarily uh, uh, something movable. So <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's for us peasants. Yeah, it's for us peasants. What? <laughs> us you pe peasants. <laughs> the Vibe's much more expensive than the, the gear. It is. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Plus, you have to have the computer that runs it and everything. Yeah. So... I'm still. I'm, I need to start keeping an eye on those uh, uh those uh refurb Oculuses so I can use them on my Final Cut Pro uh, edits. That is a business expense. Uh, and just maybe I'll play a little bit of Beat Saber while I'm at it. I thought when I saw Beat Saber, it was going to be a game about beats, but uh, nope, no Fraggle Rock game for me yet. So why isn't there a Fraggle Rock game? I feel like they would have done that. There's Sesame Street games. Just I'm surprised there's not like a Fraggle Rock dozer build a city. Oh yeah, like a Sim City kind of thing, yeah. or or like the there's one of those like uh, uh, iPhone cash grab. Uh, <laughs> man, that, uh, that Avengers Academy had me for a while, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, I'm not actually doing anything. Now I'm like real. I'm real weird when it comes to freemium games these days. Like like I I go in and you kind of see the okay, that's the thing they want me to buy. No no like wait wait this isn't fun anymore. I don't care that Spider-Man's doing something or John Cena's gem game is, is really kind of cool looking, right? So I, I don't know if I'm just kind of oversaturated with them. Maybe. I, yeah, and no, it's, you can definitely tell there's the ones that are definitely trying to get the money grab. Then yeah. I feel like there's some that, eh, it'd be nice. Like, I feel like Pokemon Go, right? You can totally yeah, get yeah, by on Pokemon yeah. Go without paying. Like, I don't, and, and I don't money. feel bad. I'm like, you know, guy that has the thirty dollar um, Pokemon <laughs> Go thing, but it enhances the thing. You get something out of that. I got a physical thing, and it's a cool Pokemon thing that I can be, see a kid in a in a Pikachu shirt and be like, yeah, I'm one of you. Uh, <laughs> instant street cred right there, buddy. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> but, but I feel like there's those games that don't. That, that don't push the agenda and then there's other ones that you're not getting any further unless you give us they, you some don't more yeah money. you don't get anything out of it uh there, there's no play value to it you're just like oh i'm just going and trying to level out and like some of the recent wwe games you're just like 
well, I'm fighting and tells me my guy's not strong enough and I don't really know a way to get stronger except for other than keep losing to this guy and eking up my experience or just completely, you know, breaking down and dropping 10 bucks on this game. But you, you dropped 10 bucks on Mario Run. I did. But they, <laughs> but I got levels out of that. I got yeah, a true. game you, out of that. You got a, you got I also dropped $5 on or $10 on Monument Valley, right? Mm-hmm. And it's nice to have a game that works on a plane without internet. Mario Run is Mario half price Run. right now. Really? Because of Mario Day? Yeah, I guess. We we Christopher's been begging for the remaining <laughs> levels. So we we broke oh, down the, for the five bucks. Drop it at ten. You get your you know you're getting I, your ten here's bucks my problem. That I is. already dropped the ten bucks on it for me. So now I gotta pay you can't that's not that doesn't count under parental sharing. No. So what, I what had about a family plan? It doesn't in game purchase because it's an in game purchase. No. It don't count. So I had to I had to cough up I so I spent fifteen dollars on Mario Run. Come on. It is worth that game's worth twenty bucks. That is I will I'm, give I'm Nintendo <laughs> Nintendo like Animal Crossing. I fell off the I fell off on, on Animal Crossing after Christmas. I got my Christmas tree and I'm done. Katie, if you go to my Animal Crossing, I don't know if it's even on your phone anymore, but uh It is. <laughs> if you go look at my campsite, it's probably still Christmas. I'm that guy. Oh, I haven't. No, I haven't played it since. It's St. Patrick's Day, but it's Christmas in Sorgland. Oh, oh yeah! Oh yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, I want to give a shout out to a new sponsor on the show. Mm-hmm. Thank you to our good friend Alex Cars. He's, uh, of course, been a contributor to this sh- this show and others on the Sorgatron Media Network for a good while. Uh, but he also does graphic design. He's actually done some pieces for us. He's done the logo for uh, IndieWrestling.us for us um, and some other things. He has a, some really cool shirt designs around pro wrestling, too. So uh, if you're uh, you know putting together the puzzle design and uh, media from uh, branding to print and digital products, and we can attest to his work and some great stuff. Uh, Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, even uh, photo and video projects. You can check out Alex Cars doc, AlexanderCars.com. That's K A H R S dot com. And uh, Alex Cars, ooh, he got a dot media domain, guys. Been looking at some of those alternate domains. Uh, so that seems to make a lot of sense. And you can say he's even done some t shirt work for us for um, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Some good stuff. I wear these. Dude, I, I, I'm wearing one of his designs at least once a week. <laughs> Katie, you've seen it. Oh, yeah. Uh, but no, you can I know go. That. Property of mayhem. Yeah, you have the property of mayhem. We 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 literally wear his stuff. Uh, we wear we wear his work on on our sleeves or in our sleeves, and sometimes no sleeves when it comes to Katie. Uh, but anyways, and he yeah, he's in a lot of work. He does some geeky stuff, some cool stuff. He's helped us with our website for indiewrestling.us as well. He's done t-shirts for uh, a lot of pro wrestlers out there too. So some really good stuff. Check him out. You help with your design needs at Alex Cars or Alexander Alex Cars Media or Alexander Cars. Dot com. Thank you so much to Alex for supporting the awesome cast. So, Chilla, I don't know if this is awesome, what Microsoft has been doing with their Windows. S mode. I mean, that sentence in general is kind of loaded, isn't it? <laughs> so, we, we've talked about S mode before. It's basically that they're, they're, they're rolling out Windows that it's a version of Windows that I think is best described operates like iOS. That you can only wait, or operates or, like the old RT, or exactly, right, exactly right, right, when they first talked like about Windows this, RT used to, where you can only install things from the Windows Store. So you think that would be a little more secure? It's true, it's vetted, but I mean, when we talk about things that are actually in the store, that's kind of another question, right? Um, and this was this was initially targeted at <laughs> schools. Bless you, bless you, thank you. And it was initially targeted at schools and education, right? So they they had to come out and explain a little bit how. Upgrading from ESMO enabled PCs to full Windows 10 will be free. So you can get your version. I think if I read this article right before, like you would get your Windows 10 home or pro even version, and it may come initially in this S mode. So if you're a company and it's like, well, I want the pro features, but I only really want to like, like the default is Windows store only. It feels like when you get a Mac, and you can't install anything except for the App Store. Yeah, really, the Macs do this, don't they? Yeah, you have to go into you have to go into Gatekeep. Is you Gatekeep go into Gatekeeper. You go into security. So, if those don't know on a Mac. If you install something that's not from the App Store or something that's not from a trusted developer like Adobe or something, right? 
you like you'll you'll get a pop up that says you can't install this because it's not a trusted developer. But all you need to do is go in if you're the admin, which most people with their own laptops or whatnot are, is go into security, turn it off, you know, type in their password and say allow this this app, right? This is kind of a widespread button of you know allowing this kind of situation. It seems right. What what I like about and. I'm interested to try this out now that I can. You can downgrade and re-upgrade and switch back in in and out of S mode. Because don't forget, okay. if okay. you were in S, if you used Windows 10 S, that meant you couldn't use Chrome or Firefox. You were stuck with Microsoft Edge. You were stuck with Edge. Nothing because, is in the App Store yeah. for other ones. Yeah, and it's against their terms and, and services to put in a different browser in the App Store. Hmm. So it kept it keeps Google Chrome out of. Yeah, that so. seems anti-competitive, <laughs> but except that the fact that you can't install it otherwise, so yeah. so it's not really that. But bad. the interesting thing, so on Windows, you couldn't get Chrome on there, right? Now you can turn on and off S mode at, on a whim without like reinstalling the OS or upgrading. Okay. So it, it's a it's a it's a one setting. The difference to me, the difference in the Mac is if you download an app from a, a non-trusted developer or not from the app store and you go into gatekeeper and say allow this app to run and then you you switch the setting back it will remember that you said this app is allowed to run mm -hmm. what i've been hearing is that if you in, if you turn off s mode so you're allowed to run anything or install from anywhere and you install chrome and then you turn on s mode i'm hearing that chrome won't run anymore Really? It's like it doesn't remember that you installed it before S mode was so on. It weird. knows it's in S mode, so it shouldn't be running things that aren't out of the app store. Hmm. I'm interested to see how that works because what I could, where I see this being of value is uh, you could take a device, set it up exactly how you want it to run with all, only these applications, then turn on S mode, which then pretty much says no malware can run, no no other applications can run. Locks it down, makes it safer. It really locks it down and makes it safe. Ideally. But if it breaks everything else that I set up prior to turning on S mode, that's a problem. That's a bomb. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see how that rolls. Yeah. It's Katie, mm -hmm. your eyes are feeling better on YouTube these days? Yeah. Yeah, they have a dark mode now. Yeah, I saw this. I turned it on. It's nice. Mm-hmm. It's much it's easier like, on the eyeballs. Do you use Twitter in night mode? Yes. I use Twitter in night mode even not at night. Yeah, because it's and yeah. it's basically just the dark theme, right? Yep. I mm -hmm. mean, it just it, it one it should probably use less energy. It should depending or... on your screen. Well, yeah. okay, if you have yeah. an OLED screen, yes, which is the newest iPhone. So you guys over there in the new, in you guys over a new iPhone club over there. <laughs> more battery life watching YouTube. We can get like one more hour. You got the YouTube. new new one versus YouTube's <laughs> versus. I got the old busted, but uh, but geez, I'm I'm fine. And the consideration of when the new phones come out, I might get a refurb eight. Did did they have this on Android prior, or has this been? Is this just it rolled out everywhere? Uh, to all I have not seen. It looks like it's just. It's launching today on the YouTube iOS app and arriving soon on the Android. I love ah. the Google things. <laughs> Go iPhone first. What's the deal with that, Google or YouTube? Or they know where their users are. Jeez. Okay, I guess so. Uh, but you guys can turn it on. And actually, you'll know because it's probably been bugging you already uh, to try it out and try as, as it does. And I'm like, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Um Chilla, why is this in, why is this on the awesome cast? This is not an awesome thing yeah. that I'm being tracked before and after I go to the movies. And so, by the way, I got a letter oh yeah. from the CEO of Movie Pass today in my email. I'm sure a personalized letter, of course, oh yeah. because this is the awesome. Because yeah, if I said, "Dear Mike," yeah, he probably <laughs> did. Those assholes. Uh, <laughs> they know uh, your name. Email Mark. What, what were you saying earlier, Katie? On the other show, emails are hard. <laughs> yes, I don't like I don't like to send out uh, the the emails for like company emails yeah no, stressful. it is stressful because they're like did i say everything did i do what did i misspell i know i misspelled and then stupid mail champs like i'm gonna touch the button with my finger and i'm like you're a jerk i mm -hmm. hate you mm -hmm. hey they <laughs> sent me a high five t-shirt the one time when oh, i talked about nice. on twitter so go mail um yeah supposedly now here's the thing they said that they know where the movie pass people are going <laughs> like from their house to the theater it was a horrible horrible comment that that like the ceo or somebody made um but so they came out and said no 
we're not actually the only times where location is used is when you look up a theater based on your location or when you actually check in because you hit the check in button when you're 100 feet from the theater and then your card is activated so you can actually go see the movie like i mistakenly saw a wrinkle in time when i was in florida this past week not for adults um which is a weird thing to say in this day and age uh but anyways yeah i'm sure it's fine i mean really i you know how many things walmart knows where i am come well, on and that's right i mean like i do we really need everybody's that? flipping out about this everyone's thing. flipping out about it and i'm like you checked in on yelp you gave the yelp review at the restaurant before you went have to the you theater. seen what google maps has been doing for lately yeah, yeah i mean is this really that big of a deal i, I was driving somewhere um in my, you know, just in my, just driving around, checking out the area kind of stuff. And I was like, literally like, I wonder if I've been through here already. And I'm like, oh, I can completely flip to two days ago in Google Maps and see if I had been at this location. <laughs> like, 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 the recall help is amazing. And like, I feel like if you have an iPhone or Android device and you have all these things, awareness is key. But to have a modern phone and being freaked out that you're being tracked is it doesn't work. It's not compatible mm -hmm. uh, yeah. for the most part here. You know, uh, it being why people have you're, you're paying for the convenience and the cost savings of having unlimited movies on a monthly basis. Yeah. Yeah. It's for, like for a, for a small price. I yeah. Mean, it's like Facebook. You're the product, right? Movie pass. Yeah, actually, that $10 isn't really paying for anything. And the product's actually going to be the fact that you're going to get all these emails about movies you never heard of or movies you probably weren't going to go to because that's the point, mm -hmm. isn't it? That you don't just go see Black Panther. You go see shape of water that you maybe wouldn't have paid $15 to see. That's the point. And now they're, I mean, that's the movie pass. Uh, the adventure experiment is going to go on for a while. And I think this is, and also a little bit of that, um, startup, uh, mentality that startup, um, cockiness. I think, mm -hmm. doesn't this feel very Uber of them? Uh, so it'll be interesting. I still got my movie pass. It's fine. Just because their CEO is an idiot, their other CEOs have done much, much worse things that we probably still contribute to. Maybe uh, that'll anyways. be their new motto. We're not as bad as Uber. Yeah, that should <laughs> yeah. be like. I mean, I'd be like, why should you fund my uh, my company? Pff, we're not Uber. <laughs> I mean, guys, we have some humanity left. Uh, but anyways, uh, woo. Anything else you guys want to touch on here, <laughs> so we can lighten this up on the way out the door. Holy crap. I'm good. Um, you're good. <laughs> oh, please. Uh, Waymo begins self-driving uh, semi-truck uh, semi pilots in Atlanta next week. There you go. Stay safe, Atlanteans. No, nope, that's not the right one. That's that's Aquaman. But anyways, <laughs> guys, thank you so much. Uh, John Chichilla is at Chilla on the Twitters, ChillaTech.net. John Chichilla on the Facebooks. Okay, you do this. Uh, you can see her uh, live Q&A with Scott. With the Scarehouse over on the Scarehouse Facebook page right now, yeah. coming to other outlets. I'm sure you'll get the notifications and the email once yeah. she braves up to do an email again. I know, stupid, scary emails. <laughs> yes, yeah, scary. It was just, and it, consider these emails involve zombies. Yeah, it is still scary. <laughs> Literally today, involved me. zombies. Yes, I get to tell people about zombies and it still scared me. <laughs> exactly. Did I spell zombies right? I know, that'll be the day. I'm like, ah. Oh, Run. Or Why, what? Who spells zombies with a Q? Yeah, what? Oh my gosh. Or, or I attached the wrong video. Anything else you want to It's a silent Q. It's a silent Q. Of course, check out scarehousepodcast.com. A lot of great stuff. Uh, a few new interviews were recorded today that were not on Facebook Live. Those are fun. What? Those are not zombies coming in. That's our yes. next co-host. Yes. Uh, <laughs> there he is. Uh, but anyways, you might know something about zombies. Uh, at Dutter's on the tour. Anything else you need to plug? Yeah. No? Is that Kate everything? Marie PGH, if you want to follow me on Instagram. I'm way more exciting there than anywhere else. <laughs> yes. Well, we talked about your partial body shots yeah, I don't lately. Know what it is. It's Interesting now. crop. You know, you know you don't have to be square. Are you trying to keep it still keep it real with the Instagram shape with the I try to cropping. Yeah. I'm trying to be hip and stay with the, the squares. I don't want to met you know. <laughs> He's like my rice cakes at two in the, or it's one hip in the morning. To, it, it's hip to be a square. <laughs> it's hip to be an Instagram square yeah, crop. Yeah, there just, you go. We'll yeah. work on that. That's our that's from our new awesome cast geek themed uh cover album. Um <laughs> it's hip to be um it's four square. 
Uh, I'm at Sorgatron <laughs> on the Twitter is uh, SorgatronMedia.com. And Missy, Missy, producer Missy, who's given me all the looks and the head smacks Yay. all night. You're forgetting something. Oh, no. Oh, hey, shout out. I, there's a whole section that I missed here at the bottom of the thing. One, if you're in the area, please join us here Wednesday night on the 14th for the game night Ides of March. Our friend Christopher Whitlatch is going to be in here, and uh, we're going to be playing some board games. He uh, was featuring a pretty cool-looking uh, kaiju-based board game um, that the name is going to be uh, King of Tokyo. I know uh, we have a lot of people interested there. Uh, get some people in here. There's actually a lot of people interested in going according to this. So uh, check that out in our events section over the Facebook uh, Sorgatron Media and Awesome Cast. Also, shouts to our friends Millville Music Festival, millvillemusic.org. It's coming up here on May 12th. There's plenty of events in adva- plenty of events going to be happening in advance, of course, uh, to help with the fundraising and everything. Yes. And while we've actually been live, they've went live as well from their Facebook <sighs> no. to announce the first wave of bands. Oh, check them out. Can't wait to see who's going to be representing on the Sidekick Media Services stage. We had a lot of fun with that last year helping with the stream and uh, everything there. It's going to be fun. They take over Millvale. Go down there, see some music. It's free. It's free. It's the entire town. Just step foot in the Millvale. There'll be there'll be music and craft beer. And I think they have some people that throw axes down there too. Um, so no, there's an axe throwing place now. Well, there's an axe throwing place. It's not part of the festival. No, no it's not like in the middle of the streets unless they kind of moved it out. But I'm just saying there's like, I mean, there's just those. It's there's bad. cool stuff in Milton. And there's Mr. Smalls and there's there's our friends at River at River's Edge um, and, and all kinds of fun stuff. And, and Missy will probably be there, too, if in the, some if, capacity. If there's zombies, will there be axe throwing? <gasps> Ooh. Zombie axe throwing? In- we need to work something out katie uh <laughs> and uh of course please check us out here every tuesday 7 p.m eastern subscribe to all the things please rate and review tell your friends if you got geeky friends think it'll be into this conversation if you have anything to contribute go to the facebook group for the awesome cast uh thank you to our awesome chatters uh you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.